Welcome back Petapixel viewers, it is Chris Nichols here and now for something completely different. I have not shot instant film in years, but today I have a great opportunity, the brand new Fujifilm Instax Mini 99. Now, typically the Fujifilm Instax has been aimed at casual photographers, just fun, simple stuff, you know, but the Instax Mini 99 takes things a bit further. This is using the Instax image control technology. It adds a bunch of different color filter effects. It adds vignette control. It gives me exposure, flash control. So the Instax Mini 99 is really about giving the user a bit more creative control to have a little bit more fun. Now, I should mention that the model we're using is technically pre-production, but we've been assured it's a very close to a final review copy. I got tons of film on my pocket, let's get shooting. So oddly, the Instax Mini 99 doesn't have the mirror in front for self-portrait, so I'm gonna do a self-portrait in a puddle. That is art. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. So it's awkward to sit down because I've got like eight packs, a bulletproof vest of Fuji Instax film inside my jacket here. I'm like an illegal film dealer. Look at that, you want some of that? But uh, I'll fight through it for you guys. So I got a lot of shots here in my pocket because this camera does so much. And let's start off with some of the filter controls that we have here in this top left dial. We've got our neutral setting, but we've also got faded green. We've got warm tone, light blue, soft magenta, sepia, and even a light leak effect. How Fujifilm is doing it, well, that's Instax magic. I mean, it could be LEDs, painting it on. It could be colored filters, combination of both. But I do want to make clear that unlike some of the other Instax cameras, this isn't a digital camera that then projects a digital image onto the film. Uh, you know, there's no memory card slot or anything like that to save digital files on this. It's just straight up analog. Now on the top right hand side, we've got another dial control. This has a neutral setting. I've got light in the exposure, light in plus or dark in the exposure and dark in minus. And this just gives me a level of control over my exposure. It's quite simple. This camera does have a flash and I can turn that on or off and change controls for that as well. On the back here, I've got self timer, flash controls, and I've got a mode button that lets me go between things like indoor shots or faster shutter speeds for action and sports or multiple exposure, or even a bulb mode. I don't know if we're gonna play with all that today, but it is full featured. And then on the lens here itself, this is my on off switch. So I turn this dial from off to three meters to infinity for typical long distance shooting. I've got 0.6 meters to three meters for portraits. I've got 0.3 meters to 0.6 meters for macro and extreme close up stuff. Also right on the lens, I do have this vignette control and you can see it basically just closed down aperture blades, make sure you don't touch those to actually create a vignetting effect around the corners of your image. Now we've got two shutter buttons here, one on the front and one on the top based on whether I want to do vertical shooting or horizontal shooting, whatever works best for me. And then this is powered by a lithium battery. It's an NP70S. You cannot charge it internally. It comes with an external USB power charger, but that works just fine. Now the viewfinder, I do have to say, I mean, it's not lined up center to the eye cup. So I often find I have to find it first with my eye before I can shoot. That's slowing me down a little bit. Last thing I want to point out on the side here, we've got a quarter 20 inch thread, which is perfect for tripod mounting and it also comes with this little metal uh, knurled knob here. I can screw this in and it's actually providing a nice grip for me to hold on to the camera. So I'm really appreciative that Fujifilm sent multiple packs of color film along with the Instax Mini 99 because this ain't cheap but I still absolutely want to shoot black and white as well so I went out and bought a pack of that. I got 10 shots so now we're going to switch over to black and white mode. Enjoy that and it'll be over a lot sooner than I want it to be I think. All right, so as you can see, we've got this nice, bright, sunny day, which is actually really good when it comes to testing the different color modes that we have here. So in neutral mode, I'm finding that, like most Fuji Instax cameras, my shots do come out with a slight cold tone, and that can make shadows quite blue, even with the neutral setting. So now let's take a look at some of the other color settings that we have here. So first, I'm going to say the forest green and the light blue I actually really like because they're quite consistent, and you do get a distinct green tone and then a distinct blue tone. I think this would be a lot of fun for certain shots. 
So then the next thing I wanted to try to do is counteract the bluish tone that Fujifilm Instax tends to go towards even with neutral settings. So I tried the warm tone color profile and what I would say about it is this, it is nice, it's pretty, but it tends to go a little bit more pinkish than it does like a warm yellow. You can see the shadows here still have a distinct magenta tint. So then I want to try the soft magenta setting. Well, that is anything but soft. It's cool, but it's quite a strong purpley magenta effect. The sepia tone actually gave me the warmest kind of color balance, but it doesn't give it very consistently across the whole frame. I tend to be getting this quite bright yellow spot more in the center. So then the last color setting I want to try was the light leak setting. And I thought this would be cheesy, but it's actually kind of fun. You get this very strong rainbow effect and you get this bright light leak in one of the corners. And I think it'd actually be quite effective if somewhat unpredictable. And then the last thing I'll say with any Fujifilm Insects camera, although they suggest 90 seconds for full development, I find that it still actually takes quite a few minutes before you get all of your tonality in the picture. So you really got to wait quite a substantial amount of time to really see the color depth, how the shadows are turning out and how your exposure looks. So Fujifilm Insects Mini, it's notorious film for having blown highlights. I mean, dynamic range isn't really the point here. It's about having fun. That being said, I am finding that I'm leaving the exposure control mostly on the dark setting, just a little bit below the neutral setting. What I do find also is you kind of got to treat metering on this camera a lot like an old school center weighted camera. Without getting too complicated, what's that, what that means is this. If I have a scene which is predominantly dark, for example, I actually have to darken my exposure down on purpose. Otherwise, those shadows are gonna become too bright. And then anything like you can see here with Jordan with sunlight on his face is just gonna basically block up and be completely white. What I did find that worked really well when we stopped for a bite of lunch indoors was to use the fill flash. Fujifilm always has really good fill flash on these cameras. It meters well. I still keep the exposure dark, but I know the fill flash is gonna fill in some of those shadows. And by darkening the overall exposure, I'm not gonna blow out those highlights too badly. But in the end, this is Fujifilm Instax. Highlights will blow. Just have some fun with it. Okay, so word of the day for this review, fun. I actually had lots of fun with this camera. It is definitely the nicest, most full featured Fujifilm Instax camera. I've used so far. I really like the compact nature of it, the look of it. It's understated, but just the small size, it's really easy to just go up to people on the street, say hi, you know, get their photo, share a photo with them. And so that's a really fun experience. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys. It'll come out in about 90 seconds. I like the controls. I certainly had fun playing with a lot of the color filters. I could never quite get the color tone that I want, but that's not the camera's fault. That's just the way that Instax film turns out. Always a little bit cold for my taste. The exposure, I mean, I do like the option to be able to be creative with that. And I guess the only negative cynical thing I would say about the whole experience is because I've got so much that I can play with here with the vignette tool, the exposure changes, the color tone, I could actually go through a ton of film trying to really zero things out and get things exactly the way they want. So if you're really trying to be very specific about the look and really dial in your shots, it could get expensive. There's a lot of experimentation involved. If you're willing to just kind of have fun, go free, play around, not worry too much about the results and just enjoy what you do get, well then you could actually find this a very liberating experience. But as I mentioned before, waiting long enough for the film to actually develop properly so you can really gauge tonality and exposure, if you're really trying to dial things in, that could slow you down, especially on the street. I just don't think it's appropriate making people wait for like five minutes before I want to check it again. But in a studio situation, for example, you could have a lot of fun with this. My only complaint overall with the handling of the camera it still comes down to that viewfinder. Even using it throughout the whole day today, I still found that I would often center my eye to the eye cup and then have a hard time getting my eye centered to the actual viewfinder. When I'm going vertically, it's in the top right and I naturally match that up. But when I'm going horizontally, it's all black and I'm like, what's going on? And then I got to try to find it with some practice that'll get better, but that still threw me off quite a bit. And as far as the focusing distance goes, I was trying to set it diligently today, but honestly, on Fujifilm Instax Mini, you get lots of depth of field. I really didn't think it was that critical. The only thing I will say is if I'm really up close to something, remember parallax, what I see through the viewfinder is not gonna be the same as what I see through the lens. So if I compose like this, I gotta remember to move the lens towards that, just a couple of inches, just to kind of compensate for that. And that seemed to work pretty well. Lastly, battery life, no issues whatsoever. I'm still at full. Honestly, I feel like you'd go through hundreds of dollars in film before you'd ever have a problem with the battery life running out. So I think that's a non-issue.
But in the end, though, it was a really nice experience today. We had a beautiful day for it. It was really fun just hanging out with people on the street and giving them some photos and stuff. It was a really nice exchange that way. So I think that this is a really cool camera to look at. Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think about this. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And check out the podcast. It's on the exact same channel or all your favorite podcasting apps. Just search for Petapixel Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us today, guys. We'll see you soon with more episodes on Petapixel. Thank you.